Good day. Today I'm going to build and fly my latest Micro FPV race drone. I'll briefly explain why I decided to do this particular build, provide you with a complete list of its components with links to all of them in the video description below, and quickly take you through the major steps of the build itself. Keep in mind what you're about to see, an RC model aircraft hobbyist enjoying building his own unmanned aircraft system, or UAS, with prefabricated parts from different manufacturers and purchased from currently existing American hobby shops, then flying it at altitudes below 400 feet in an area which has not been pre-approved by the FAA, will soon be deemed against federal government regulations if the FAA's proposed rule on remote ID of unmanned aircraft systems gets implemented in its current form. So, if you're currently having fun building and flying your own RC model aircraft in any form, fixed wing, helicopters, quadcopters, etc., line of sight, or FPV, or think you might be interested in starting, we all need your help. Please take a look at this video which briefly describes the FAA's proposal on remote ID of unmanned aircraft systems. It shows you three ways you can take constructive action and provides you with all the necessary tools to do so in its video description. I've done my best to make it easy for you to help ensure our continued freedom of flight. Speaking of flight, I'll finish this short video with a fun flight through and around some race gates and flags to see what she can do. If that sounds like fun to you, make sure to give it a thumbs up below and subscribe to your TMAC FPV channel, your home for your journey to better FPV fun, flights, and racing. Stop. So why this particular build? Well, I wanted to capture some good HD video while at the same time having good FPV video so I can enjoy my flights in real time. That led me to the Cadex Tarzir V2. I already have the Cadex Tarzir V1 on my Flex RC Kalugo build, which is an H-type frame. If you want to see that build, check out this video at the link above or in the video description below. Because the Tarzir comes with its own electronics board and heat sink, I was looking for a frame which had dual stack capability. One stack in front for these boards, and another in the back for the flight controller, ESC, and VTX. As I just mentioned, I already have the Kaluga, which is an H-style frame, with very efficient Airblade Superman 1404 3850 kV motors for long cruising-style flights. That's not what I wanted out of this build. I wanted a bottom-mount battery frame in a true X or normal X configuration, a stretch X, or even a hybrid X configuration with a 12 by 12 motor mount for some powerful yet smooth motors for more of racing style flights while capturing some good HD video. Turns out there's not a lot of these types of frames. The ones I considered are the Acrobrat coming in at 54 grams, the AK Crossbow at 39 grams, and the POB 150 at 46 grams. I wanted the lightest one possible, but I've heard there may be some jello issues with the side camera mounts of the crossbow, so I went with a POB 150. I thought by doing that with a little inspiration from my friend in the UK, Sub 250G FPV, I might be able to shave a few grams of weight off this frame. If you're not aware of Sub 250G's YouTube channel, go check it out. He does some pretty amazing custom Sub 250G builds by modifying stock frames and taking an innovative approach to their power supply, among other things. These are the components I used along with their associated weights. Links to the main components are listed in the video description below. To get the all-up weight of the build below 250 grams, with a 650 milliamp hour LiPo, I used one of Sub 250G's techniques and drilled some big holes in plates of the frame and got rid of about 7 grams that way since the bottom plate on this thing is fairly thick and durable. Alright, let's take a look at the build. I've got all of the motors soldered up to the ESC and before I go any further I want to check to make sure that the ESC is operating properly and all the motors are working properly. To do that I'm going to use my smoke stopper connected to the ESC power lead and then I'll connect the battery to the smoke stopper. If this lights up we have a problem. We have some sort of short or some sort of uh, electrical problem with the ESC and the motors. If it does not light up, we're good to go. And you heard that sound, and you see that the light bulb is not lit up. 
That means the ESC is working properly. And one way to see, check to see if the motors are working properly, I'm going to unplug this, is you could actually hold the motor while you plug this in, and you can feel it to make sure that it's connecting. So I'm holding the motor. I'm going to connect this. And I could feel that motor vibrate. That one's good. That one's good. And that one's good. So at this point, I'm confident in saying that the ESC is working properly and all four motors are working properly. And I wanted to check that out before I made any further connections with the ESC to the flight controller and started building out my stack. If I didn't check this out and I built up the stack and then I found out that one of the motors was not working properly or the ESC was not working properly, then I'd have to take it all apart again. So we're going to check things as we go along to make sure that at each step, as much as we can check it out, that things are working properly. For an overall cleaner build, what I like to do is to measure the length of my wires before I actually solder them on to the flight controller. So before I connect this VTX with these wires to the flight controller as depicted in this diagram, what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure the necessary length of these wires and cut them to length for a more cleaner build. So the way the VTX is going to sit on top of the flight controller is like this and these wires are going to be connected to this side over here. So these wires don't need to be that all that long. Just with a spacer in between the flight controller and the VTX, the wires only need to be about that long so I can get rid of all of that. So that's what I'll go ahead and do now. Of course you want to make sure that you have enough wire. It's better to have too much than not enough. And then I'll go ahead and tin these wires and solder them up to the flight controller. It's fly time. Launch mode activated. Ready to launch.
Well, that was a blast. I hope you had some fun with it. Remember to check out my video on the FAA's proposal for remote ID so you can take some constructive actions to make it better. Also, grab your free 3-inch frames guide and micro motors chart through the links in the video description below. Thank you for your time. We'll see you next video. Clear skies, friend.